Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of IndyCar. Today it is the day of Boris Johnson's, uh, well, almost anointment as the new uh, King of the Tory party, being the 22nd of July. Now, you might be forgiven for thinking that that's the only thing that's happening in the news at the moment, and actually you wouldn't be far from the truth. Apart from this distraction of the oil tanker tit-for-tat uh, seizures where Britain and Iran are trading um, oil tankers with each other, and one or two other things have been happening in the meantime, but the one I thought was probably the funniest of the week was comments made by Jacob Rees-Mogg's sister, Anastasia, who is now, uh, as I understand it, a, a Brexit MEP and is working if working is the correct term for what she does with the Brexit party uh, in the European Parliament and she reported this week along with other uh, Brexit members uh, uh, to admitting that she struggled with the electronic voting system used in the European Parliament because as she put it she couldn't keep up um, she could vote in seconds and just press a button to make a, 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 a vote registered on the system and the efficiency of this system is obvious, really. You know, when you're going, we have a big workload of things to work through, of amendments and motions and things to be voted on uh, in a parliament which contains 27 uh, different countries. <clears throat> then they need to work their way through things quickly. And unlike the bulky, uh, time-consuming filing out through doors into lobbies that goes on in the Westminster. Um, anachronism that passes for Parliament in this country, they simply have uh, an electronic pad and all they have to do is register their vote, either yes or no, to support the motion. And uh, Rhys Mogg was, was quoted as saying that she didn't have time to think uh, about you know what she was voting for. Well, if she bothered to actually listen to the debate and listen to what was being proposed, she could quite easily keep up. But it's interesting that these British uh, Brexit Party members are having such a struggle with such a simple system uh, as electronic voting. And it does go to show you just how far out of date the British parties are. And also the British system uh, in Westminster is stuck in the 16th century, really. And um, all the, the wigs and the, um, you know, the, the, the stockings and the buckled shoes and all the rest of it, and the scepter and the mace, all of this stuff uh, is largely just historical anachronism. It's unnecessary in a modern day uh, democracy. But it's amusing to see that uh, one of the Rees Moggs, who, who really do actually live more or less in the 19th century, is struggling with such a simple thing as an iPad or, or an electronic um, slate where you just press a, a, a button to say that you vote yes or no to whatever it is that's being proposed. So that's pretty amusing. Okay, but uh, talking of things that electronic uh, brings me back to something a little more serious. And many people over the last few weeks have said that they've experienced a lot of <coughs> interference on indie car shows. And I have as well. I've received lots of jamming signals and uh, there have been attempts to garble the audio or take it out of sync. So there's been a lot of problems. And somebody said to me, how are they finding you? And I actually, at the, at the time when that question was asked, I didn't know. But... In order to stop this happening at every broadcast, I've been forced to switch the phone off and drive in a random pattern around the city streets, stop, switch it back on again for five minutes, and then switch it off again and drive around a bit more in order just to, to keep ahead of whoever it is who's tracking my movements. So I thought I would take a... I would, you know, I'd just take the opportunity to find out if there is actually any tracking device fitted to the car. So I have a, a radio frequency scanner that uh, I bought online, which is the kind of thing that people use, um, private investigators use them, and uh, politicians and bodyguards use them. So I, I bought one of these, and I scanned the car with it, and uh, it went off, all the bells and whistles went off uh, almost constantly, and it took me a while to realise what it was that was actually creating this buzz, and it was very close to me in the car. First of all, I thought it was in the dashboard, and then I scanned the footwells, and I scanned under the seats, uh, and then the light sockets in the in the car's roof panels here, looking for cameras, looking for uh, for bugs and transceivers and transmitters. Nothing. And eventually, uh, I thought, right, I'll I'll turn everything off. So I turned the car off and I switched the phone off, and this, I could still get this uh, this signal. 
So I discovered that when I started to point the, the detector around, when I pointed it towards the phone, it, it squealed. And I thought, oh, right, hang on a second. This phone is switched off, right? So it shouldn't be emitting anything at all. So as soon as I brought the, uh, the detector up to the phone, near to the camera at the top of the phone, it went haywire. So there is definitely a hardwired bug inside this phone that I'm talking to you on at the moment, which sends out a ping. And I've actually, I can even record the sound it makes as it's transmitting, because it is transmitting positional information every two seconds, as far as I can make out. So somebody, somewhere, has managed to figure out that this phone, which has a battery that you can't take out, remember some phones have got built-in batteries, this is one of them, wrapped around this battery is a transmitter that's hardwired to the battery. So even when the phone is switched off, it emits uh, a short-range radio signal. It's not very powerful, but it's powerful enough that somebody within, say, a few hundred metres, or maybe within a quarter of a mile, would be able to find it. So this is something deeply worrying. Why are uh, phone manufacturers building trackers into the phone that can't be turned off? And this is a question I think we all need to ask, and we all need to check our phones. I use Samsung phones, um, and I've found them very reliable over the years. But what I didn't know was that Samsung, with these permanently fitted batteries, I've got a built-in tracker and it's active all the time, even when the phone is off. The only time the tracker will not operate uh, is when the battery is fully discharged and it doesn't have enough voltage uh, to power this little device. So, I am suspicious, obviously, of this. Uh, what I don't know is who designs these phones and who puts these devices in the phones, and also who has information which uh, allows them to monitor the frequencies that these little transceivers are giving off. Now, they might have been placed there uh, in order for um, the owner of a phone to be able to find it if it's stolen, even when it's switched off. Now, that's the most likely explanation of this. But the problem is that the phone has a bug in it. And that phone, which has a bug in it, so even when it's switched off, you can be located uh, maybe not that accurately, but certainly within a few hundred meters of your location you can be found, even with your phone turned off. So, I still continue with the various um, strategies that I use to avoid, not too much detection, but just to avoid people following me uh, and using high-powered radio transmitters or jamming equipment anywhere nearby. But I think it's interesting that Although I'm not suggesting that the British government has had anything to do with sabotaging the phone, that they do have equipment that is capable of tracking the phone. There are no bugs in the car as far as I'm aware, and I've swept the whole car. So it's definitely the phone that's the problem. And I would uh, I'd just get everybody who does any live streaming just to think about where they are, uh, and if they have any interference, any radio interference on their phones when they're filming something, to have a look around them and see what vehicles are parked nearby. See if there are any unmarked vans or just vans parked nearby or, or vans that have been kind of following you for a while and pulled in behind you. These are the sorts of things you look for because there are uh, MI5 uh, operators out there who are eavesdropping on the kind of things that we transmit and they are watching us to make sure we're not terrorists and that we're not a threat to national security and all the rest of it. But the point is that your phone nowadays can be tracked in a variety of ways, even when it's turned off, it seems now. So this is something that we all, I think, need to bear in mind. And remember, if you are filming events such as All Under One Banner or you're live streaming, even the, the bigger uh, uh, groups like, um, uh, like in Independence Live and organisations such as Broadcasting Scotland, which is a fixed uh, link live streaming service but has live streaming cameras may be affected by this kind of interference if they can be tracked. But it's a, a measure of how seriously the British government takes independence and how, how much of what we say is being monitored all the time. Anyway, I just thought I'd let you know that I know that I'm being tracked and I know how I'm being tracked now uh, and I can take steps to avoid that radio ping getting out of the car. It's quite easy for me uh, to muffle it. So now that I know it's there, 
I've designed a little container so that I can put my when my phone switched off I can put it inside this container and it will block the uh, the radio emanations from this little transceiver so there are always ways of defeating things but first of all you need to know if they are there so if you are a live streamer uh, or a youtuber check your phone if it has an internal hardware battery you can buy a cheap scanner from Alibaba or any of the propriety brands like Radio Shack a cheap scanner and wave the wand over your phone when the phone switched off and see if you hear what I heard when I did my sweep Anyway, that's it for today. We'll find out who uh, has been crowned the king of the Tories tomorrow. Um, it's widely expected to be Boris Johnson. And I think as soon as Boris Johnson forms his, his government, his, uh, his cabinet, uh, and reveals his plans for Brexit, then I think events will start to accelerate at a rapid rate of knots and we'll suddenly see uh, a break in the logjam uh, and an end to this interminable waiting. Let's hope so. Anyway, I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.